Hello and welcome to the Bottom Line Me podcast. I'm Ann Allard, and today I'm very excited to have an old friend of mine join me for our podcast, Jim Siflart. Jim is the New England Agency Sales Manager, and today he's here to help us learn a little bit more about how to prepare and attend a networking event. Jim, sure. thanks so much for joining yeah, me. Yeah, it's great Thanks. to see you again. Yeah, yeah. You too. Yeah. You too. Look forward to the discussion on uh, networking. Great. So. Well, let's get started. I think a good place to start would be, you know, this is the time of year when a lot of networking events kind of, it's peak time for mm -hmm. networking. So um, there's a lot of them that you could attend. How does one go about making a decision or deciding on which ones they should make an effort to attend? Sure. I, I always tell my uh, account managers to look for the primary customer events first. So for us, the primary customer being the attorney. So what attorney events are out there coming up? Uh, here locally, we have the REBA, which is a real estate bar in Massachusetts. So we have, we know we have May and November. Those are kind of the, the, the networking event we go to knowing our primary customer is there. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think those can be the most productive. Now, during the summer, you get a lot of our secondary customer events being the broker and lender, more so real estate broker events. Mm -hmm. So um, that my account managers will attend a lot of those. Those are very social, um, obviously a lot of boat cruises and things like fun that, things. And fun things like that. Um, so yes, we'll, we'll do you know, quite a few of those during the summer. And then um, as you get into the fall, it's kind of, it, it, it kind of goes by the quarter and maybe even the season, so to speak, because um, you get out of the, 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 the summer with the, the fun stuff and then you get into the fall and I find it is more education based um, networking events and things like that. Plus, as I said, we have our REBA event in, in November. So again, I would keep with the primary customer first because that's where you'll be most successful and most productive because you're trying to mm -hmm. bring on new business from them. And then, of course, the secondary customer, you're, you're trying to really um, have the primary meet the secondary so the attorney meet with the lender or the broker. So you're trying to facilitate conversations mm -hmm. with your customer meeting their customer. You know what I mean? Like, um, which is very important to right. actually, you know, help your primary customer being the attorney agent for us, um, you know, meet people that they could go ahead and get business from. Right. You know? So I think that's part of it. That's an interesting strategy. I hadn't thought about that, that you're not going there just to, um, to meet and greet yourself, right. but you can also go with the, you know, with the objective of bringing one of your own customers so that they can make a exactly. connection with someone else. Uh, that's, that's very interesting. Yeah, if we can facilitate, you know, a conversation or, and, and start building a relationship that makes, you know, the agent look good, right. You know, and also obviously bring them you know, right. more business. So. so now that you've figured out, you know, what events that you probably should pay attention mm -hmm. to or make an effort to go to, what are some of the things that somebody should do in preparation? Sure. Uh, so there is a good deal of homework. Uh, I always tell my reps, um, I would start by seeing if there's, is a, if there's a list available. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times, like, again, for Reba, they put out a list um, of the people that will attend. So that's, that's valuable. So uh, go on the list and make some realistic goals for the, for the networking event. I want to see these 10, these 15 people. I want to engage with at least these people. Um, and then knowing those people, their names, contact info, you can go online, you can hit their socials and do a little more digging into, you know, their firm um, or maybe their, you know, in terms of their brokerage or whoever you're, you're mm -hmm. going and trying to get more info on. So in other words, you're prepared. So when you get to the event, again, you have the goal in mind, you have your list of people you, re you really want to connect to. Um, and it's not just you show up and look around the room and what do I do now? Um, so yeah, there is a, there is a, in order to be successful, um, and be productive at these events, you really have to do that type of homework. Yeah. You know? Hey, well, what about even connecting with them before the event? Is, could be is that, that yeah. is that something that you think would be valuable? Or oh, absolutely. Is it useful? Yeah. I mean, take for instance, if we're going to say, uh, New England Mortgage Bankers event and we know because we saw the list that one of our agents will be there. So we'll connect with them. Um, we'll talk about, okay, why are they going down there? Uh, who, who would, the, you know, their primary customers, lenders are, you know, going to be there. Do we want to 
have lunch or dinner. Right. You know, so again, connecting those people and kind of helping helping the agent. I, I can see that that can be really useful that you're, because I've gone to events at times where you walk in the room and it's t- totally unprepared. Right. I, I hate to admit it, but um, and, but if you go with a plan in advance, exactly, you, yes. you target somebody that you want to see, uh, and then you decide what it is you want to accomplish with right. that person, whether it is just to meet them for a cup of coffee or take them to dinner, or whether you're there to pursue something um, more serious, like exactly. getting getting them to, to to work with you. Yeah, and it really takes the anxiety away from the networking event because yeah. you know we often say I think we've talked about this before. That's it's one of the toughest things to do is to walk into a room full of strangers, right. and try to meet people. Yeah, you know, and do icebreakers and things like that. But if you've done some homework and you kind of know the, some of the people that are going to be there, mm-hmm. you can navigate towards them at the beginning, and you know, yeah. and be more again more productive. Well, that leads me to the next question. What about the strangers? What if you walk into a room and you know you're faced with a room full of strangers? Yeah. Are there any any tips you can share with us on how do you yeah. break the ice? Yeah, I mean, I've done a couple of things. Like you 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 go over and you could ask them, you know. Something like, have you been to this to this event before? Just get people kind of talking about themselves, which they love. People, everybody well, that's likes a great opening about question. Yeah. yeah, and then you know, a little probing question, and maybe hopefully they're in the mood to talk. Most people going to a networking event want to meet other people. That's why they're there. Right. Um, so I've done that before. If if you're standing in a line to uh, get some food, I yeah. mean, you take the plate and you hand it to the next person. You hand them the plate. Here you go. Right. So thank you. And then you could start a conversation that way, yeah. you know, about mm-hmm. uh, ask the same question or maybe comment on the food that you're about to eat. Yeah. Um, little little things like that. Yeah. It almost sounds like it's intentional, too, though. You've got you, you're you're thinking to yourself, OK, I'm going to point out I'm going to you know, target someone while I'm here yes. and then figure out what it is I need to say or what I need, if it's an action, if you're in a line. Yeah, that's an easy way to start a conversation with someone. Sharing food is always a exactly. way <laughs> to make a connection. And I would add, too, if you're going with colleagues, make sure you split up. That's one uh, thing, especially as a manager, when I go to these things and I have four or five you know, of my of my account managers there and I look and they're all in a clump in the corner, yeah. you know, that's not being productive again. <laughs> and yeah. so make sure you spread out. You know, again, it's more difficult to spread out. I mean, you know, but the networking events, it's 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 kind of wor- it's work. Yeah. You know, it's not going to be that comfortable in the beginning. Right. But again, I found too, the more you do, the more comfortable you get when in that setting. Yeah. You know, it's almost like doing a cold call. You know, when you go into a an office of, you know, you don't know the receptionist going in that that anxiety. But you know, the more of those you do, the better at it you get. You know. Right. So. Right. Well, great. So, Jim. What's the bottom line on networking? What's the one thing someone should make sure that they do if they go to a networking event? Sure. I would think it's it's follow-up. I mean, mm-hmm. if if you go there and you spend the time and you do the homework and do the things that we just discussed, and yet you leave the event and you, you just kind of set it and forget it, then it's been unsuccessful. You've wasted your time. So, you know, whether you're in, if you're going back that night after the network, networking event to your hotel room or you're going home... Make sure you look at your list. You write down, you know, your circle. Did you meet your goals for that event? Did you see these people? Mm-hmm. Of the people you saw, you know, then you have to have a follow-up plan. You know, we talked about that 24, 7, 30. You know, oh, that you. Yeah, within 24 hours, you want to make some sort of connection, you know, via email. Within seven days, maybe you make a connection on LinkedIn or one of your socials. Right. Within 30 days, you're trying to get us, you're trying to schedule a meeting, you know? And if it's a meeting with, um, you know, one of your primary customers, maybe you have a coach that you met there too. When I say coach, somebody that might've been part of the conversation that's willing to help you, uh, get that meeting, you know, go ahead and, and, uh, and, and leverage that as well. But you definitely should be doing something within 30 days. Cause if you don't, you're, you're, I mean, you wasted your time. So, so that's the bottom line bottom folks. Line. Make sure you have a follow-up plan schedule. Exactly. Well, thanks everybody for joining us today until next time. Uh, We at Agency University hope you'll continue to learn, grow, and prosper. 